You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey, we're going to call Stace. Okay. Um, we're going to just put him right on the air. Does he know that, or do I need to play some music and prep him? Is he... I don't... What, you can bluff him? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Let's just call him up. If he's got an issue with it, we'll, uh, we'll sign off and bring him back. Call. Here we go. See how this works. You know, I've had a lot of issues with this equipment trying to dial people. It's actually really ridiculous. Can I leave a message if it doesn't pick up? Yeah. In fact, he has a funny voicemail. Does he? Hello. Hey, Stacy Peralta, please. Yes, this is him. Hey, this is Ethan with Combat Radio. How are you, Stacy? I'm good. We're not on right now, are we? Uh, yeah, we are actually. Skip said you'd be okay if we just put you right on. Why? You need me to call you back? I'm not. Just give me one second because I'm on another line. I just have to uh, get off and I'll come right back. Okay. Okay, you got it. it. Must be his agent on the other line, right? Hey, there. Ray. No, that's me. I just got a radio interview, so I got to jump. But I'm going to email yeah, you the information, us. and I really, really appreciate you. Uh, just down in share case with they swap me, something uh, <laughs> <laughs> classified. Stacy's not one of those yeah. kind of guys. Okay. Hey, Stacy, how are you? Okay, I'm back. Hey, man, I'm sitting here with uh, my co-host Camden Toy, Tommy Fogarty of Fogarty Wines, and my buddy, your buddy, the man, Skip. Cool. Hey, is there any way you guys can call me on a hard line, or is it too late? No, I can call you on a hard line. Here, hold on a second here. Um, actually, you, That'd be no, great, because I, I don't want to get left on this. No, no, we don't want to lose you either. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, Stacy. I'm going to hang up with you, and I'm going to call you right back, all right? And we're going to switch to, uh, yeah, just hang tight. I'm going to get you right back. Can I give you my phone number, though? I'm going to have Not to call you there. back. Not over the air. Not unless you want a bunch of fanatics. No, no, no. I, I wanted you to call me on my hard line. No, I know. Hang tight. Hang tight. I'm going to disconnect, and I'll call you right back on this line, and then I'm going to get your hard line and call you back on your hard line. I got you. Great. Thanks. Okay, buddy. Bye. See how we roll here? Just about anything goes. In the meantime, everyone's going to have to listen to a little bit of the Dogtown Z-Boys trailer because this nice. documentary is one of the best ever. So you guys take this on, and we'll be right back. Before extreme sports, before the X Games, before it all, there was Dogtown and Z Boys. This was not the beach that people came to vacation at. This was the last great seaside slum. It was uh, paradise. You didn't go near that place if you didn't live there or know the people because you were going to get hurt. Surfing was it, and skateboarding was just an extension of our surfing. Grab your board and go sidewalk surfing with me. People thought this was some like stupid thing that little kids did. Zephyr team was the most influential skateboard team ever. No one was aggressive or as radical as they ever were. We were being paid to ride skateboards. It was crazy. Zephyr team really sparked a revolution. Once pool riding came in, that's like all that we wanted to do. What Tony did one day, he goes up, pulls the board up, turns in midair, comes back down into the pool and makes it. It just changed the whole ball game. Dog tunners get to go to Hollywood parties and they get to hang out with rock stars and they break into people's backyards and skate empty swimming pools. I'm in. By doing something that everyone said was a waste of time, we ended up influencing kids all around the world. There wouldn't be any X Games if it wasn't for most of the boys that I skated with and competed against. It was unreal. Dogtown and Z Boys. All right, let's call your buddy back. Hold up, here we go. Ah. It's going to be badass if I can get this piece of equipment to work twice in a row. That in itself is a major Hello? achievement. Hello. Hey, Stacy, Ethan. Hey, Ethan. Hey, man. All right. Now, officially, welcome to Combat Radio. Stacey Peralta, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that was no small technical feat. I want you to know that I'm not very tech savvy in this booth, but we got you, and we're happy to have you on the show, Stacey. How are you? Cool, man. Well, thanks for having me. No, man. We're big fans of yours. I mean, I, first of all, I think the documentary you made, and I've told Skip this, but he always blows me off, uh, is probably one of the best I've ever seen. Um, and uh, coming from Warner Brothers, that says something. 
Well, thanks. I appreciate that, man. I, I do. We've had, we had a good run on it, man. We never expected it to succeed, and it, it, it kind of went beyond our uh, wildest imagination. I didn't think anything could upstage your appearance on Charlie's Angels, but, man, that fucking documentary kicks ass. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, I'm, I'm kidding about the Charlie's Angels thing, of course. But, uh, <laughs> but he, not he isn't really. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say? It was the high point of my life, guys. I would, hey, man, at, at that age, I would have loved to have been on Charlie's Angels, too. Make no mistake about that. Uh, but Skip, what do you got to say for your friend here? Now that we got him on the air, you want to say hello or no? Hey, say so. Anyway, I, I, the reason I'm here is I'm you know pitching stuff, right? So I, I talked to these guys on the phone the other day. I was explaining you're going to re, you're actually going to do the documentary of the Bones Brigade. Oh, are you right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Are we allowed to discuss that now that we've said it in front of a million and a half listeners? Are we allowed to talk about? No, it's absolutely. What happened is eight years ago, Tony Hawk and Lance Mountain and all those guys came to me and they said, "Look, we really like what you did with uh, Dogtown. We think we have a, a legacy and we'd like to, you know, see it in film form. Would you do it?" And at the time, I just I said no. I I, I just didn't feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. After me and um, Lance called me about three months ago and said, "Look, we really want to do this. Would you reconsider it?" And so I did, and with trepidation, you know, we're going to do it. Wow. i got to give him a lot of credit because you're a perfect director for it. And I, I, I see why you were resistant at first, but that, I mean, your work on Dogtown is unbelievable. I mean, it was so good. I was emotional at the end of it because I grew up in Woodland Hills, not too far from where the, you know, the principals take place. And it just seemed, it just right out of that era, it just put me right back there. I mean, it just captured it perfectly, man. It was just really impressive. Well, yeah, what's even weirder about Dogtown is people that don't even ride skateboards look at that film, and somehow they connect it to their own childhoods. It brings back a lot of memories for them. So it, it touched a nerve that, as I said, we never expected. We just didn't expect it at all. How'd you... We kind of made the film. We made the film basically under the radar. Yeah. And, you know, at the time, there weren't a lot of documentaries that looked that way. Most documentaries were typically about... You know, um, starving children or, or some catastrophe that's hit some country, and this was more of a celebration of youth. Well, I think many parents uh, across America regard skateboarding as a catastrophe that hit uh, in, in its own way. But uh, certainly, well, they certainly <laughs> did at that time. <laughs> but certainly, I mean, it just anyone who's seen this, and I encourage everyone to take a look, find this documentary, get the DVD. It is unbelievable. Probably one of the best I've ever seen, and I've seen hundreds. It's just unbelievable how it captures the time, the music, Sean Penn's narration. How was he to work with, Stacey? He couldn't have been easier, man. He yeah. didn't want to get money. He didn't want to be paid for it. He didn't ask for, you know, he didn't have any issues with being directed. He was just like, look, let's just do this, have a good time, and let's go out for drinks afterwards. Uh, man, I like his style. We'll be just as easy. Yeah, it couldn't have been easier. We'll it be... couldn't have been easier. He was a real, real nice guy, and then we ended up surfing together after that. Oh, man. You know, it will be just as easy when you need us to narrate your Bones Brigade, Doc. Don't worry about it. I promise you. <laughs> Skip, you wanted to say something. What do you got, buddy? Oh, anyway, so the, the point is is that I'm really happy that Stacey's doing this because he and I talked about this a few times, and, and you know, first of all, he needs to continue, like, the legacy that he put forth. Mm hmm which is important. And, and second of all, it's like what happens is because of skateboarding and surfing as considered like non-centralist uh, activities, um, we need to have our own history and put it out for people. And, um, so I think it's like really essential that he does, does this for us. No, I, mean, I agree. Let me ask you this, Skip, with Stacy on the line. What did you think of this kid when he showed up at your shop that first day? He was really cute. Really? That, that's that's what went through your mind, Stacy's. <laughs> no, he, yeah, I have, a, I have a lawsuit pending against Skip right now for child molestation. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Come on, man! It wasn't all. But, that but bad. we're still friends. You said you were eighteen. He said you said you were eighteen, Stacy. You know what I mean? But um, no, the thing is, is, is different people, and I just tell people this: they think I'm crazy, but different people. The air around them moves differently. I don't know how to explain it, but just there's a certain um, self-awareness of where they are and their place in the world, and they don't, they probably don't even realize it at the time. Mm -hmm. So when Stacy showed up, you could just see that he was special, you know, going to do something. Um, we just didn't know that it was going to end up being this. So you knew this guy had some sort of skill set, some sort of intangible X factor to his personality when you met him, basically. Sure, but also like what happens is, is there's this thing I always talk people it's called an internal gyroscope, mm -hmm. and it's not something you can really teach. It's just people have a certain or 
innately are born with a certain <clears throat> set of balance skills that are just not teachable. And you either have that or you don't have that. It's mm -hmm. just going to work out for you. It's not. Hey, Stacy, let me ask you this. Uh, well, look, can I actually add something here that I, I, you know, I have to say something. Because I was a surfer and because I was a skateboarder as a kid and because I didn't particularly do well in school, I didn't get a lot of compliments as a kid from adults or older people. And so getting on the team was, of course, the utmost importance to me. But now that Skip brings this up, I have to tell you a story about what happened in the shop one day. I was in the shop on an afternoon or a weekday, and Skip uh, was behind the desk, and a mother and her son came in to look for a surfboard. And Skip all of a sudden got a phone call. And he told me, he said, he, would you handle this woman and her son? And I didn't work there. I was just hanging out. And he said, but would you handle them and see what they want? So I took this kid and I was showing him surfboards and talking to him and listening to his issues and what problems he had about what he wanted and whatnot. And, and they ended up having a really good experience in the store. And when they left, Skip looked at me and he goes, man, he goes, you did that so well. How did you know how to do that? And I had no idea what he was talking about. And, and it was one, of, was one of the few connections that I made as a kid, like realizing, wow, I, I guess I did something righteous then because Skip, whatever I did, he blessed me, you know, and I just was taking care of this kid and listening to his issues and making him feel good about the surfboard that he wanted to buy. And what, <clears throat> anyway, no, that's just a little story of the Zephyr shop. And, and thank God you made the sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was week to week and the other thing I must say about Skip that he was so helpful in, in the Dogtown documentary is, you know, I was wor walking a tightrope in that film because I'm the filmmaker and I'm also one of the principals in the film. And I was very nervous about that. And I, have, I had a lot of trepidation about it. And I, um, Skip was the one that took me aside one day and he said, you're not putting your story in this film. And I told him, I said, I know I'm not because I'm not comfortable doing that. And he said, yeah, but if you don't do that, you're rewriting history in a way that history didn't unfold. He goes, you have to do it because it is your history. Mm -hmm. And you have to step up to the plate and you have to embrace this. And by gi him giving me his word like that and kind of like giving me that pep talk, it gave me the strength to kind of insert myself into that film where I wouldn't have otherwise. It was, it was literally because of the uh, conversation I had with him and how intense he was towards me on that. That's quite the producer's thing to say, Skip. What do you have to say about that? Well, the whole thing is is that it would change the whole complexion of the way the thing came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at that documentary and realize him not being in there, there would be a completely hole in the situation. Right. And realistically, it was, you know, him, Tony, and Jay of, 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 in a lot of ways. I mean, the other guys were unreal good, but there was a certain dynamic, um, you know, competitively and culturally and tension wise and stuff that really made the three of them excel in different ways. You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer right here on LA Talk Radio.